Hi, Sharon Brennan here, Cottage Lane Stamper. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator from the U.S. And today I'm featuring um, one of the new suites. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's from the our new catalog, the 2020-2021 catalog. And it's on page 82 and it's called the Peony Garden um, Suite. And it's got just absolutely gorgeous flowers and embellishments. It has some shimmery granite, um, gray granite ribbon, some vellum um, doilies, and these beautiful flower dyes, and um, as well as some gorgeous stamps. But today I'm going to be showing you this die for the peony, the 3D. I love 3D flowers. Um, so I'm going to get started on that. And that's on page, I was going to, to tell you, page 82. Anyway, this is a stamp set. It's called Prize Peony. And I am going to be using a couple of sentiments from that today. And these are the dies. And when you get the dies, they look a little intimidating because they have these weird shapes. Really weird. So there's three different leaves, three different sizes, and they are different. And there are there are four dies that make up the 3D peony. And that's these right here, as well as the stamen, pestle, I don't know. The thing in the middle. So we're going to be using those. And then there are two other leaves that we're not using as well as um, dies for the stamped images. And those are for the stamped leaves. And then a beautiful border that I'll be using on another card later. So I have pre-cut the, um, get these back out of the way here. But, you know, I, when I first got these, I thought, what the heck are these? I just didn't, I, I could figure out the, the leaves. I didn't know what these were, so we're going to go through this together. And I'll be honest, this is the second time today that I have done this video. I made three cards for three friends, mailed them off after I took some pictures, went to download my video, and... Um, it wouldn't, I couldn't retrieve it. I could see the file, but was unable to retrieve the file, so kind of frustrating. Anyway, now the key to this flower, these four pieces here, is that these bottom pieces here all line up. Let me zoom in a little bit farther. So these all line up, and that's how you know how to put them together. So that is called the bottom of the flower. And what we're going to do is we're going to sponge these, and I actually am casing this from Rachel Tessman, a fellow Minnesota demonstrator. And I'm going to use petal pink for this one. I did flirty flamingo. And this is a flirt this is one of my first tries, flirty flamingo. It didn't turn out as well as I had hoped. Um, but I'm gonna try the petal pink, just a softer color. And then um, I'm actually gonna be using a little bit of glycerin. I s <laughs> I um uh, soaked up some glycerin in this several months ago and it's still pretty um, moist I should say and the reason I'm doing glycerin and you don't have to do this is because I find sometimes oops I'm doing the wrong part here I gotta do the bottom part um, when I use glycerin it just seems to sponge a little bit better. Um, it seems to go on a little bit smoother. So make sure I've got the bottom parts here. 
And then if I have my, <coughs> excuse me, petal pink sponge here. Oh, that's about a blushing bride. I have to grab another one, just a second. I'm going to have to make one. So you'll see how I do that. Um, you buy, buy these sponges and they are round. Let's see if I have a whole one here. They come in a package of three and they're round and what I do is cut it into sixths. So this is the last part of a sixth one. And then I take you can use any punch you use, but I just use this um, pretty label. Label me pretty punch. And I punch that out. One, I fold it in half as near as I can. Get my bone folder here. I write the name on it. Let's see. Petal pink. And the reason I do this, well, to identify it for one thing, the color. And this cardstock gives you a little bit to hold on to it as well. So then I just put it over the top there and I staple it. I might go down and staple it again because it looks like it might be a little too high. So that is how. I do my sponges. Now back to the drawing board. So now I have my petal pink I'm just gonna we're gonna just do the bottom parts of these so just a little bit. Now I, my previous videos I did it in um, flirty flamingo and then I did petal pink on petal pink cardstock. And I'm just going to do, hit just the edges here, the top part of it, just for the part, this part. Rachel didn't do this, so I'm <laughs> going off course a little bit here. But I just think that the glycerin gives it a little bit smoother application. And you can get glycerin at any grocery store or like Walgreens or Walmart. Target and maybe even arts and craft stores have it. I don't know. I've never looked. I've had my model for so long that um, I don't even remember where I bought it. So we're just going to give a good sponge right up to the cut part there. Move them on the edge on the top. Not much, just a hint. And this one's a little bit harder to do because I'm doing the wrong end, that's why. Gotta do the bottom part. Right up to the cut part there. I was trying to. I might try this in another color like Melon Mambo. I used to have um, peonies in my garden when I was living in New Ulm, Minnesota. And they were absolutely beautiful, vibrant pink color, dark, deep pink. So, we've done that. Now, I'm going to put these together. Before I do that, I'm just going to curve them a little bit with my bone folder just very carefully I'm kind of holding it right on the cut so I don't tear it just to give a little bit more dimension and this one I think these flowers are just absolutely gorgeous and all of my friends that I sent this card to today um, Trying to make sure that I did the right side of that. Yep, I did. They all love flowers. All have flower gardens, and so I, 
I'm hoping that they enjoy these cards, so let's curve it just a little bit. Okay, now to put these together, I'm going to start with the smallest piece and tuck it into the next size there. And I'm going to put a little glue on there. You want a good adhesive to hold these together. So we're going to line these up. Kind of pull this down a little bit and line these up. And that's how you know how the card goes together is when these pieces line up. So, you know that looks kind of dorky now with just some of that sponged. Just gonna try and do a little bit there. There. And then this one fits in this one, so we're gonna put a little glue here. And you don't want to do the whole thing because it doesn't take up that whole space on the bottom of the next size up. So can try to do this without getting glue on my fingers and match these up here it's really coming together and then here a little bit Dice that looks much harder than it really is. Um, there. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that. It's gorgeous. And then for the, whatever this part is called, stamen or pestle, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I should know, but I don't. I love flowers. I'm just going to take a little bit of um, so saffron. And, there's that, I'm just going to hit the edges a little bit with this. Because not much of it's going to show. So, put that back there. And we're going to get a glue dot, if we can find them. And we're going to put it right towards the top here. Sorry for the noise, I got my window open, motorcycles are going by. Let's see. Let's tuck that in just for a hint of color. There. Now, the leaves. Okay. And you, when you're die cutting, you can always tell the leaves are kind of, um, the shape's kind of rounded and it's got almost like a cut piece. The, it's a sharper edge on the other side. So the front side is softer looking than the on the back side. So make sure I have them all going the same direction. And I'm gonna, these larger pieces are in pear pizzazz. Sorry, my nails look terrible. I got ink under them this morning somehow and I just can't get it out. Anyway, um, we're gonna use some pear pizzazz. And we're just going to sponge them just a, a little bit. You don't have to do this. I just think it gives a little bit more dimension to the to the leaves. And I should be going in circles. You want to go in circles when you're sponging. So I could have hit these with the. Let's just try an experiment. Let's do a little glycerin on this one. Let's see if it makes much difference in the look. A little bit softer looking. Almost looks watercolored. If you can see that or not. Oh, went the wrong way. So, let's zoom out a little bit again. <coughs> now, if I would have been thinking I would have used my adhesive strips um, for these. What you do with the adhesive strip is you um, 
cut a piece of, when you cut your cardstock, you cut a piece of the adhesive sheet, I should say, um, the same size, and put it on the back, and then when you die cut it, you just peel them off, and um, it's much easier to apply, but I wasn't thinking this morning, so we're going to use my good old trusty silicone mat, and I'm turning them upside down, and I cut these pieces out of um, old olive, so what I could do oh, here, I'm going to do this. I have another sponge with glue on it, so I'm going to take some glue and just go like this. And I think I need a little bit more glue. And you can just wipe your mat off later, run it under warm water and rinse it off. The excess glue. And so these pieces definitely are all different and definitely have a matching dye that goes with them. So that one goes with that one. It just gives it a little bit more depth of color with the um, darker um, die cut on top of it. And it's sticking to my finger. And it's upside down. There we go. And then this one goes here. And with the sponging, it really blends in really well. And one more, just a tad more glue. Yeah, turn, make sure I have it upside down. out of the way. Oops, it didn't stay stuck, did it? Stuck to my fingers. I'm just going to put some right on there. I guess I didn't put enough glue on my... If you have the fine tip glue pen, this would be good for that. But I'm putting it on the wrong side. <laughs> I'm going to put a note in my dies to make sure that I use the adhesive sheets for this. There. That little piece just does not want to stay stuck. This looks like I have a hair on there. Tiny, tiny bit, come out. There we go. Don't want to do it. I did get a little excess, so I'll let that dry and then I'll use my adhesive eraser on it. So, we're going to let those sit for a bit and just dry. We're going to work on the rest of our card. So, I've got this back layer um, in petal pink. And I'm going to take this Whisper White piece. I think this is, let's see, yeah, this is four by five and a quarter. And this is just a hair smaller. So it is like um, three and seven eighths by five and three eighths. I think that would be right. Three and there. I am going to run this through with the um, through the subtles embossing folder, and I'll be right back. And this just gives it a little bit of I don't know if you can even see it, a little bit of texture there, just a tiny bit. And then I'm also going to do the same thing with this is a piece of um, gray granite cardstock. It is two inches wide, and I just took a scrap piece, and it's four and a half inches long. And I'm going to use my triple, whoop, wrong punch. Triple banner punch. And just slide this in here. And pop 
punch it. And I'm going to, this is going to be a birthday card. So I decided mid card here to make it a birthday card. Um, it's got some beautiful, um, should I get that centered right? And I'm using Memento Black here. Um, some beautiful sympathy um, card sentiments in the the stamp set, the um, prize peony ones. So sorry for your loss. My thoughts are with you. Um, so that's got a tiny little background um, stamp too that actually goes matches with the DSP that I'm going to be using. Now there is a gorgeous, it's called Dainty Diamonds embossing folder and I thought I had ordered it but apparently I didn't so that's why I'm using the DSP. Rachel used a piece of um, silver foil and it was absolutely gorgeous. So, but I'm going to run this through the, um, the um, Subtles embossing folder also. When you um, stamp something that's going to be embossed, make sure you always stamp it first so you get a nice crisp image and then um, do your embossing. So we'll put this together now. So we've got our petal pink. And we'll put our embossed layer on top of that. And then this piece of DSP is two and a half by four. And oops. And I need to trim just a hair off of there because I made the whisper white um, just this. A smidge smaller. So there we go. And put this on. We can try to center it. If you don't get it centered exactly, that's okay. But if it's better if you're gonna not get it exact, then have a little bit more at the top than at the bottom. That was something I learned in interior design class a long time ago. So it still holds true, but what I learned. So then this is going to go right here, right at the edge of the white, and you're just going to have a little piece of this DSP poking out. And then I'm going to use some dimensionals on this. And these will kind of hold these pieces in place too. buddy. Oh, we're going to put you right there. And then we're going to take some glue dots and tuck these leaves underneath. And before we do that, we're going to curve the leaves just a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'll put a couple of these on here. We're going to tuck this one here. Curve you a little bit. And I wanted to take that my adhesive eraser. There it is. And get some of that excess glue off there. Now we used to sell these. And make sure I have glue on it. Um, we don't anymore, but you can find them at your local hobby store as so. well. And tip this one under here. And, oh, you didn't stick either. Well, you guys are being very cooperative today. There. Now it's going to stick. more than enough glue on there now. I'm going to try to curve it and hold it together. There we go. Put a couple of 
see what else here. And this little guy is going to go underneath here. Isn't it gorgeous? I just love that flower. Wow. And I could have curved these up a little bit more, but it's too late. So then we have our card base. It's here. And I just burnish that a little bit. And I'm going to use some glue on this. It's horrible to have to go through all this work and then have your card fall off the front. Oh, I love that. That is gorgeous. Now, I'll be posting... I did three different cards earlier today, too. And one of them I actually used vellum on. So, um, I'll post the different pictures. This is a little crooked. Uh, there. Nice thing about glue, you can get a little window of opportunity to, to change it again. So then for the inside, I'm going to use um, this sentiment. It's from Peaceful Moments stamp set. And it says, wishing you every happiness. And I just can't seem to get that straight. There. And then I'm using one of the flowers from inside. And I'm going to take the um, Petal Pink again. And if you're going to stamp your sentiment inside, stamp it first. Because if it messes up, then you always have the opportunity to turn it over. So then I'm going to stamp off once and stamp the image down in the corner. I like to do that. It just gives it a little bit extra special touch. And then this on here. And I find if you line up this corner and the opposite corner, either one, the opposite ones, it really helps to line things up like that. And I'm going to glue this down. Here we go on the inside. There we go. All done. Isn't it gorgeous? absolutely love this set. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, give me a thumbs up and I'd love to hear your comments. And if you do this, I'd like to see your color combinations too. Um, thank you for stopping in. I do appreciate it. And uh, take care and God bless. Oh, you can buy the supplies at my store, I should say. Um, SharonBrennan.StampinUp.net if you don't have a demonstrator. And um, I'll be posting this on my blog, cottagelanestamper.blogspot.com. And it'll also be on my Facebook group page, Cottage Lane Stamper and Friends. And that's with an ampersand. So anyway, thanks again for stopping in. I appreciate it. Take care and God bless.